and there it is, Snowball Hill, the location for this year's Winter Solstice Spiritual Fair. It's funny to think that in just a few weeks' time, there will be thousands of people crawling all over that hill. Let's go take a closer look. Well, I'm only halfway up Snowball Hill and already I am completely exhausted. It's a much steeper climb than I imagined and it's already got me thinking not so much about what we're going to have at the fair, but how people are going to get up here. Ah, a rest rock. I do like a rest rock. So halfway up the hill, if people are tired, they can sit down on the rest rock, catch their breath, get their energy back, and then carry on climbing up Snowball Hill. I might leave a few magazines around here, actually. That might be quite nice. So you can have a rest on the rest rock and read a magazine. We can utilize this. People can use this as a sort of wire banister and uh, pull themselves up Snowball Hill. Yes, that'll help. That'll help a lot. What I do love is this line of Christmas trees right here, all along the path. And uh, this will have two benefits. One, it will obviously give the fair a very festive feel. And also, these are going to take people's minds off the arduous climb they've got to make to the top. I've had an idea that when people reach this last Christmas tree, it suddenly moves. And uh, it's not a Christmas tree. It's actually my seven foot tall brother Leonard dressed up as a Christmas tree. It really makes me laugh, that idea. It would really give people a fright. Might have to do something about this. People could easily crawl underneath this bit of fence and get in without paying. So maybe I'll just put, uh, I'll probably put some spikes here. Just put a few spikes there. I don't know if you can see, but at the top, it's actually getting quite foggy. And that is a worry uh, because people could easily fall over in the fog, get lost in the fog, or worse still, disappear altogether. There's a cold wind blowing now as well. It might be called Snowball Hill, but right now I feel like I'm climbing up Everest. Snowball Hill. I'm very excited about this. I'm very excited. Where do we start? Well, I did ask the construction workers to bring a bench up here, and they've done it. They've done it. So we've already made a start. So that's good. The bench is here. I'm glad we've got the bench here. Would you believe it? But there's a blizzard coming. So I need to find shelter. Very, very soon. I've managed to find a nice bit of shelter here and the uh, the blizzard is already passing it's it's almost gone so I'm not that worried for a moment I thought that I was going to have to use my sunbeam coat more like an SOS flag but thank you to the gods above everything's going to be okay 
Well, we might only have a bench so far, but just looking around, I can already picture where everything else is going to be taking place. There will be mystical marquees, spiritual spas, a music stage, organic food shacks, and no doubt there will be somebody zooming around on a unicycle. But I've got a good feeling about this. I've got a really good feeling about this. Ah, the sun is coming out. The sun is coming out. Well, as the old song goes, there may be trouble ahead, but where there's moonlight and music and love and a healing tent, let's face the music and dance. But right now, let me show you the centerpiece of the festival. And I think it's going to absolutely blow your mind. And here it is. This is going to be the creme de la creme of the fair. This is the location for the Ice Hotel. 200 rooms of solid ice, an ice reception area, and even an ice balcony. Now, in order to make this, I've ordered about 4,000 big blocks of ice from Finland. They will be arriving in the next few weeks, and then we can put it all together. And I don't know about you, but I cannot wait to walk up the ice stairs. Well, I'm just up here peacefully drinking some ozone water and I've realized that the winter solstice takes place on a Tuesday, but really you want a festival of this size to take place over a weekend so I'm hoping the celestial gods don't mind if I push it back a few days to the weekend. That will allow more people to attend and it will also give me some extra precious days to get ready. And boy, am I going to need them. Hello, how are you doing? I, I can't talk for long, Giles. Are you going to yoga? No, I'm going to Aldi. Aldi, okay. Um, well, just quickly, Dorothy, I've been thinking we should push the Winter Salsa Spiritual Fair back a few days to the weekend. So that would be the uh, 24th to the 26th. Uh, I just think it uh, makes more sense, really. Doesn't make more sense. Why? 26th. Yes. Of December. Oh. Yeah, it's Christmas. It is Christmas, yes. Um, well, that doesn't really matter, does it? Oh, don't be a bell end. Of course it matters. Nobody's going to come over Christmas. Well, I, I don't know. It might be a nice way to spend it. What, stuck up a hill in the freezing cold? Well, a lot of people don't celebrate Christmas now anyway. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Charles. Well, you don't celebrate Christmas. You're a witch. Well, I am. Look, do whatever you want. I've got to go. Okay, well, I'll, I'll see you later. Uh, love you with my eternal soul. Dorothy, love you with my eternal soul. Love you with my eternal soul. Okay, bye-bye. I say we just go for it. Oh, my hands feel like two frozen chickens. Leonard, I'm calling about the Winter Solstice Spiritual Affair. Do you want to dress up as a seven foot tall green Christmas tree or a seven foot tall walking snowman? Buck Rogers. Pardon? I want to dress as Buck Rogers. Buck Rogers? No, that's not going to work, I'm afraid. Why? Well, first of all, it's a festive festival. And secondly, a lot of people won't know who Buck Rogers is. He's a spaceman. No, it, it, it's not going to work for me, I'm afraid. Do, 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 you, do you want to choose between the, the snowman and the Christmas tree? That would be, that'd be easier. No. 
Okay, all right, well, I'll, let's talk about it later, okay? I'll speak to you later. Okay, bye-bye. Oh, I think it's time for a hot cup of turmeric tea. So here we go, it's the Winter Solstice Spiritual Fair map. This is a rough map of things that uh, I'm going to get going and which you can come and enjoy. So let's take a look. So here's the music stage. Obviously one of the main features of the fair is where all the bands will be coming to play. What I like about this idea is the this sort of the shape of the roof here. Um, when you look at it, it looks a bit like a big pie. And I am pleased to announce for the first time that the main band to be playing at the Winter Solstice for the Spiritual Fair will be, yes, Alvis. Uh, they will be playing the Winter Solstice Spiritual Fair. How exciting is that to have Alvis headlining? Um, they have, are, of course, a, um, a rock uh, band. Uh, which is rock music crossed with uh, folk, a rock a rock band, and they are going to blow people's minds. So I cannot wait, I cannot wait to see Alvis playing at the Winter Solstice Spiritual Fair. Let's see what else. Well, we've got uh, Food City. This is where all the, uh, the food stands will be. And uh, the idea being that all the heat and the, the smell of the food will be trapped here in this uh, eco fan. And that will power this generator and then the, the electricity will be taken through cables to charge everything up. So basically the whole festival will be powered by smell and heat. Wow, look at this. It's the Ice Hotel. Uh, the 200 rooms of solid ice. I, should, I don't know what that is. I shouldn't say solid tape. And um, I cannot wait for people to come here. What I've done here is I've put some kites on the top. Imagine some kites flying at the at the top of the hotel. And uh, for anybody who can't stay in the hotel, they need to stay in these tents down here. This is the art expression mat. So it's basically just a really big mat where there'll be pencils, pens and paints. Uh, look, there's a ruler there. And so anybody who wants to unleash their creative side can just sit on the mat and do a bit of artwork. Chime bell forest. Imagine walking through a forest made entirely out of chime bells. I'd love this to be a, a big, really big trampoline in the shape of a spider which walks around the the fair and if you want to go you just jump on it you just jump on the spike big spider who doesn't like a hall of mirrors so we'll have a hall of mirrors this is the the snow gray area so snow yoga and uh, i just put here wizard I mean, this is this is just a little attraction that will just spin around just whiz around so uh, i just have a wizard cloud showers we've got the cloud showers so these are uh, these are showers in the shape of clouds the people stage this is a completely empty stage where anybody can come and do anything they want at any time and look who's this well it's my seven foot tall brother leonard hopefully dressed as a, a big christmas tree so that's just a rough idea of uh, what i've got in mind and what's going to be going on uh, now we just have to make it happen I made up a song earlier and it goes so it's winter time and I'm inviting you to the winter salsa spiritual fair we'll cleanse our hearts and minds and renew our souls so come along I'll see you there at the winter salsa spiritual fair actually our souls doesn't sound right does it, it should be our souls our souls, not uh, not our souls. Well, it's six o'clock in the morning, and Dorothy is still in the land of dreams. But I'm going to get an early start and get up Snowball Hill, and really get things moving.
this is good. So we can use this as the main water supply. So if anybody wants a, a cold drink or if they want to wash some clothes, they can come down here and get stuck in. What I like about this is that there are two pipes. Uh, there's not just one pipe, there's two pipes. So instead of having a large queue of people queuing up to use one pipe, there'll be a lot less people queuing up to use two pipes. Wow, look at this. It's like a really big uh, bowl, like a bath. It's like a natural bath here. We can do a lot with this. We could either fill it with water, heat it up, and everybody could jump in. You've got a natural hot tub. Or we could fill it with soup, like a communal soup. Everybody could sit around the rim and have a hot cup of soup, which might be quite nice, seeing as it's winter. Although I'm not quite sure what sort of soup. I guess it could be uh, tomato soup, asparagus soup, minestrone soup. Yes, minestrone soup. So this is the track that I'd use for the meditation toboggans. So what you do is you pick up a toboggan at the very top here, you get on the toboggan and you start chanting toboggan. So toboggan, toboggan, toboggan. And as you're tobogganing down this track, you keep chanting toboggan, 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 toboggan. Down here, down this bend, toboggan, 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 toboggan. And then you get to the bottom, uh, you get off your toboggan and you stop chanting toboggan. And that's how the... Uh, meditation toboggans would work. Now you might see sheep but I see obstacles. Uh, if you can imagine it's late at night and you're walking back to your tent it's dark you could easily trip over and uh, do yourself an injury so I need to work out what to do about this. Uh, what we could do is we could put some lights under each sheep a bit like those neon lights you get on sports cars. Uh, that way you can easily see where the sheep are and avoid tripping over them. And uh, what I like about that idea is that if we do light up the sheep, uh, when they're moving around, it's going to look a bit like a star field. I did think we could maybe put the sheep in here, but Thinking about it, we could probably use these as temporary prisons. Because if you've got like 5,000 people coming to a festival, well, you're gonna get a couple of bad apples. So we could put the bad apples in here, in the temporary prisons, and uh, just wait for the police to arrive. So this is the end of Snowball Hill here. And uh, this part is known as the buttocks. And uh, you can see it's quite a sort of rounded shape. And from the buttocks you get a nice view of the uh, of the valley and from the valley you get a nice view of the buttocks it would be lovely if it snowed during the festival i can't imagine how magical that would look the snow twinkling as alvis are playing on the main stage and people making snow angels and having snowball fights that said, I would need to keep an eye on my seven foot tall brother Leonard because when he throws a snowball, it's like trying to dodge an asteroid. Who's that? Who's that calling my telephone? Hello, Dr. Charles Pardon, who's calling, please? Oh, hello, Dr. Cantazzo. Yes? Yes? I've just been talking to Dr. Cantazzo, who is a local hemeopathic doctor, and he has warned me of a potential health issue that could have a major impact on the festival. That health issue is, of course, chillblains. Chillblains affect the feet, the hands, and even the nose. And Dr. Cantazzo has said that his modelling suggests that with the amount of people coming to the festival, we could be looking at upwards of 500 chillblains. 
and that's just the feet. Not many people know this, but a natural remedy for chilblains is an onion. You don't eat it. What you do is you chop it in half, scoop out the middle, and it creates this dome shape, which you rub on the inflamed area that stimulates the circulation and ultimately destroys the chillblain. So all we need to do is set up several onion rubbing stations around the festival, and I think that will take care of the problem. And then when we're all finished, we can wash the onions, chop them up, fry them, and everybody can have a plate of hot onions. So look at this, it's the confirmed acts, performers, speakers, etc., who are all confirmed to play the Winter Souls of Spiritual Fair. So first up, it is of course Alvis. I cannot wait for Alvis to be on that stage and uh, blowing people away with their incredible music. I am here, this is a, a brother and sister band. Um, that's, that's actually, that's not a question mark, they are confirmed. Uh, that's how they spell their name. Jambazahu, I love Jambazahu. If you haven't seen them play live, well, you are in for a really big treat uh, once they b bring their drums onto the stage. We've got Mary Doblington. Uh, Mary Doblington, uh, I've met her I've met her a couple of times. I still don't quite know what she does, but she's confirmed. Tony's two Tugans. Um, now, I, I've met Tony a couple of times. Um, I've only, I haven't actually met his toucans, and uh, my only concern is what exactly the toucans will be doing, because obviously I don't want any animal cruelty uh, going on at the Winter Souls Spiritual there. Um, if they just fly around or flap about, I, I'm fine with that. I just don't want to see them being forced to ride bicycles or anything like that. Best Triangle, um, they are a band that don't have any instruments. We've got Big Tasty Sausage Acorns, uh, this is just a food tent and uh, they have these really lovely big sausages that are made entirely out of acorns. Uh, Hempy Susan, Hempy Susan has a line of clothes uh, she'll be selling which are all made out of hemp. Um, she hasn't worn anything else but hemp for about 30 years. Herbal hot pots, I mean that's pretty straightforward. It's hot food in a pot made out of herbs. Gary's Gong Baths love Gary's gong baths. Uh, I'm so, so pleased he's going to be coming. Um, you wait until you, you, you sit in the bath and hear the gongs. You're going to love that. Uh, we've got Shash, um, Shash, lovely woman. Um, she's a healer. She's a healer. She'll be uh, hopefully just running around and uh, healing everybody. And we've finally, we've got Colin Octopus, Clive Octopus, Diane Octopus, and Sarah Octopus. Uh, they are a, a dance um, act. Um, I think they should come up with a better name, really. But um, they're, they're, they will be there. Of course, the, I mean, the reason they do this is because it, it shows that they, um, altogether, they've got eight legs. But um, we'll be welcoming them. We'll be welcoming one and all. Uh, so that's the, the confirmed act so far. More to come, more to come. Hundreds more acts. Um, uh, ho hopefully coming so stay tuned my main concern at the moment is the ice hotel uh, because the ice blocks still haven't arrived so let's give finland a call hello uh, finnish ice blocks albert speaking oh hello um my name is dr charles poden i'm calling from britain I ordered some ice blocks uh, a few weeks ago, but I, but I haven't heard anything from you recently. Oh, uh, we cannot deliver now. Uh, 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 wait, sorry, what? We cannot deliver the ice blocks. We are supplying ice blocks to Spain. S Spain? No, it's, it's, that, that, that's not good enough, I'm afraid, Albert. I, I'm building a 200-room ice hotel. How am I going to be able to do that without, without, without the ice? I, I, We've had to send ice to Spain now. I don't know why you're talking about Spain. I don't care about Spain. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, no, I mean, don't, don't, don't get upset, but I'd, please can you send me some no, ice? No, no, we are very stressed. And the ice is going to Spain now. I'm sorry. I just, 
Can you send me any ice at all? No, I can't. Please, Albert. No. Please, please. No. Please, Albert. I just need some ice. How am I going to build a nice hotel without any ice? <sighs> I'm having trouble sleeping tonight. I need to think of a replacement for the ice hotel. Something a bit more realistic. The first thought I had was a giant sandcastle but it would make more sense to have that during the summer. But I do like that idea. I would like to stay in a, a giant sandcastle. What is this? One word, obelisk. Actually, two words, gargantuan obelisk. That's it. That's what it should be. I don't know what I was thinking. We don't need a nice hotel. People will be content to sleep in their tents. Content in their tents, so to say. But a gargantuan crystal obelisk. Now that's something that will really get people's attention. Okay, that's weird. There's some sort of bone here. Now you might be thinking, well, it's just a bone. It could be an animal bone. You know, you're in the countryside, but there's something about this, this bone that I find very unsettling. suddenly got very, very windy. It's when you realise or you think about what would happen in the event of a gale force wind striking the fair. Snowball Hill is so high, it means that somebody could easily blow off. And considering the amount of people here, that could mean thousands and thousands of people blowing off at the same time. That would be a disaster. just taking a break and eating some papaya pieces but I'm starting to worry that Snowball Hill is actually really dangerous. I hope not because I've told everybody it's safe. So Dorothy, for the obelisk, I was thinking we could make it out of either selenite, black obsidian, or uh, opalite. What do you think? Um, opalite. Opalite? Yes, I just said opalite. I knew you were going to say opalite. Oh, no, you didn't. No, I did. And you know what? I love the idea of an opalite Dorothy, obelisk. Have you heard about the festival in Spain? What festival? There's a really big spiritual festival happening in Spain over Christmas. Is there? Go on. Alvis. Alvis? What do you mean Alvis? It's on the website. Alvis headlining on Christmas Day. No, that, that that's impossible. Well, I'm not making it up. No, Alvis are headlining for us, Dorothy. Well, not according to this. Hey, what's this thing called? Um, Las Festival. Europe's biggest spiritual festival. Well, I've, I've never heard of it. Tony as well. No, this doesn't make any sense. You know, I spoke to somebody yesterday about the ice hotel and they said they couldn't send us the ice because they were sending the ice to Spain. No, there's something very odd going on here. You know, I found a bone in a field earlier. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, isn't that like a witchcraft thing, finding a bone in a field, like an omen? No. Okay, I'll speak to you later. I, I love you with my eternal soul. Okay, bye bye.
This is terrible. This is absolutely terrible news. Look, Laos Festival headline act, Alvis. And look, Champasahu. It's saying Champasahu are going to be there. I don't know how this has happened or who has made this happen. But I smell a fish. I smell a really big fish. This has definitely taken the wind out of my sails. But as I've always said, life is a challenge. And when challenged, what you must do is take a deep breath, trust the cosmos and carry on. Miss some messages here. Hi, Giles. This is uh, Clark Daniels from Alvis. Uh, sorry not to call you before, man, but uh, yeah, we can't play your fairground anymore. Basically, uh, we oh, shut up, man. We got a uh, double booked, and uh, yeah, we didn't realize we got a gig in Spain. So uh, no. sorry. That's rock and roll for you, dude. No hard feelings. Ciao. Alvis have cancelled. I've been banging on about Alvis for weeks, and they've just pulled out. Gary's gone bath. But I cannot make your spiritual thing oh. now. I'm afraid sorry about that. Okay, bye bye. He's cancelled as well. Hi Giles, it's um it's Melanie from Snoga. And I'm so sorry but I've had to cancel. And I'm so sorry. Snoga's off. Bye. Snoga is off. Hello there, uh, Dr. Plodden. It's Sean Finnegan here from Herbal Hotspots. Herbal Hotpots. Uh, very sorry, but we won't be able to come out to your festival. Oh, now. come we're on. Spain, so we are so yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Um, okay, take care now. Everybody uh, is cancelling. They are falling like flies. As I was coming home just now, a bell started ringing in my head. A couple of months ago, I posted an update about the Winter Solstice Spiritual Fair on my social media website and somebody left this comment I'll throw you a bone that somebody is a man called Gideon Tuspany Gideon Tuspany claims to be a healer but he couldn't heal a sprained ankle and I know this because a local woman called Andrew Shackleshorn went to see him with a sprained ankle and he couldn't heal it. I don't believe this. No. No. Well, I've been probing for a couple more hours and frankly, the cat is out of the bag. And it is a really big cat. I've discovered that the sponsors of Las Festival are the Tuspany Biscuit Company. Uh, the Tuspany Biscuit Company, your typical mega corporation, they employ 30 to 40 people, and Gideon Tuspany belongs to that family. And they've clearly used their wealth and their power to pinch Alvis, they've pinched John Bazahu, and they've even pinched Mary Doblington. And surprise, surprise, what's the main attraction at Les Festival? A nice hotel. He's not a healer. There's as much healing power in Gideon Tuspany's hands as there is in a pair of oven gloves. They don't even make nice biscuits. They're awful. They're a poor man's custard creams. Well, Sherlock Holmes had Moriarty and Iron Man had Thanos. 
and it looks as if Dr. Giles Purden has got Gideon Tusmany. But despite all the setbacks, despite the corporate greed, we still have Snowball Hill and we still have a winter solstice. So as far as I'm concerned, we still have a spiritual fair. Hang on, what's this? This notice claims that Snowball Hill has been bought for development and it's been bought by none other than the Tuspany Biscuit Company. We're going to build a biscuit factory on Snowball Hill. It's over, Dorothy. The whole festival's over. No, no, I'm coming home. I'm coming home. You're not in? Okay. I feel like I've been punched in the gut with a really big boxing club. You know, I had a winter solstice spiritual fair. And now I don't have a winter solstice spiritual fair. And that's for all those people who pulled out. Well, they don't care about spirituality. They just care about a free holiday to Spain. Well, I say shame. The shame of Spain. Evil appears in many guises, and on this occasion it's appeared in the guise of a biscuit factory. But evil never wins, and darkness is always followed by light. So even though the Winter Solstice Spiritual Fair has basically been stolen from me, I hold no grudge, because I know that one day the biscuit factory will crumble the roof will collapse and the biscuit machines will fall apart with rust. Ultimately, Mother Nature will reclaim Snowball Hill as her own. Until then, well, considering the amount of biscuit factory workers who will probably sprain their ankles just walking up Snowball Hill to work, well, it's a good opportunity for us to see how good a healer Gideon Tuspany really is. I've already moved on because last night I had a vision in the bath and it was a vision where we weren't just celebrating a winter solstice or a summer solstice, but we were celebrating spirituality every day. And we weren't just doing it on top of a hill or in some random fields but at a special center, a beautiful building that was alive with energy. And I've decided to make that vision come true. That is why I will be opening a spiritual center where we can come every day. You can come, I can come. We can come together at the spiritual center called Nana's Day.